Welcome to Cogito Design, the video series where we take a deep dive into some of the cutting edge ideas within the tabletop game design industry. The Meeple is, more than any other object, the defining symbol of modern board gaming. Ever since its appearance in Carcassonne, this happy, curvy little guy's name has gone on to appear in hundreds of games and to mean something altogether more abstract. This is a Meeple, so is this, and this is also a Meeple. They are all wooden objects in a unique shape with flat sides, but otherwise they have very little in common. So why have so many games chosen to use an object like this? Fairly simply and practically, meeples can be made easily and cheaply, and if you remain within these limitations, you can have a unique piece without doubling the price of your game by needing to create and mould complex miniatures. It is a limitation on designers that has led to something brilliant and maybe a hint at an even deeper truth about human creativity. The early days of the video game industry were full of constraints. Pong, for example, was not so simple because of a lack of creativity from its designers. This game was actually stretching the abilities of the hardware it used to the absolute limit. As the limits changed, so did the games. This might lead you to believe that more equals better. That the more choices you have as a creator, the better your final product. There is obviously some truth to this. There is very arguably less going on in Pong than there is in a modern AAA open world adventure. So it may come as a surprise to hear that today I'm going to urge you to give yourselves less choices and more constraints. As much as the Meeple is the symbol of modern board gaming, pixel art was the iconic style of early video games. These cute little characters were not the inspiration of a specific artist, rather they were the product of the severe technical limitations the designers were working under. When Toru Iwatani created the character of Pac-Man, he had a very small colour palette and some very large pixels, and this art was the result of those limitations. Similarly, the iconic aliens from Tomohiro Nishikado's Space Invaders were not an inspired choice from an ocean of possibilities, but rather a creative use of the strict limitations he was working within. We now don't need to use pixel art in games. The creation of 3D rendering engines have meant that no game designer ever needs to be limited in this way again. So why have we seen so many designers go back to it? And why have games like Shovel Knight, Rimworld and Stardew Valley proven to be so successful? I would argue that this is because sometimes giving ourselves limitations can actually be a huge boon to our creative output. There is an unverified story that Ernest Hemingway once accepted a wager from his fellow writers in a Parisian cafe. He was challenged to create a complete story using only six words. The reward was the sum of $10, or about $130 in today's money. The evening after the wager was proposed, Hemingway returned to the cafe with six words scrawled on a single slip of paper. He handed this around to his fellow writers, and one by one, as they sipped their absinthe, they read the paper. After reading, each writer silently handed him $10. Some were even moved to tears by the power of his six-word story. So what was written on the small slip of paper? For sale. Baby shoes. Never worn. This tragic tale used only six words, but did not seem limited by this limitation. It is a story that is instant in its impact, and made even more powerful by its brevity. It is enhanced by the things it does not say. A more cheerful example of the power of creative limitation is in the work of Theodore Zeus Ted Geisel, more famously known as Dr. Zeus. His most famous and successful book was again the result of a wager. His publisher, Bennett Kerf, founder of Random House, realized that Zeus's latest book, The Cat in the Hat, had only used 236 words. He jokingly challenged Dr. Zeus to write his next using even less. Dr. Zeus did one better. He wrote a whole book using only 50 words. The name of that book, as I'm sure you've guessed, was Green Eggs and Ham, 
which went on to sell over 8 million copies, by far Dr. Seuss's most successful publication. There are a seemingly endless series of examples like this, of people creating spectacular works of creativity despite the large limitations they have placed on them. Dutch painter Mondrian painted using only prime colours and right angles. Miles Davies wrote the album Kind of Blue using no chords. Even major blue chip corporations seem to give themselves unnecessary limitations. Just look at Twitter's character limit or Google's homepage. It leads us to ask the question, are they succeeding despite these limitations or because of them? Artist Phil Hansen has an opinion on this. In his 2013 TED Talk, he tells the story of the debilitating nerve damage he suffered in his hand as a result of his dedication to the artistic style of pointillism. This damage caused his hand to shake uncontrollably and turned the neat, round points needed for his craft into these unusable tadpole-like objects. He initially walked away from his vocation entirely, leaving art for three years until a doctor gave him the advice to simply embrace the shake, to work within these limitations and use them as a source of creativity. This worked amazingly, and he created some of his best work by being limited in this way. As he puts it, Instead of telling each other to seize the day, maybe we can remind ourselves every day to seize the limitation. Researchers in this area seem to confirm Phil Hansen's suspicions. Catrinal Hort Tromp of Ryder University's psychology department led a study that was amply named the Green Eggs and Ham Hypothesis. The experiment was simple. So simple, we can create a version of it now. So, pause this video and create an original poem in your head or write it down on a piece of paper. Then resume the video when you're ready to continue. Challenge two. The Japanese have a specific type of poem known as a haiku. This is a simple three-line poem that follows a specific rule of syllables. The first line must contain five syllables, the second seven syllables, and the last back to five syllables again. Japanese Buddhist monk Matuo Basho was the most famous creator of these poems, using them to exemplify the concept of wabi-sabi, which is defined as taking delight in the beauty of the broken, imperfect nature of existence. So the second part of the challenge is to create a haiku, which must contain the word meeple. Unpause the video when you're ready to continue. Now, the chances that you attempted either task are fairly low. You most likely just continue to listen without pausing. If you did take part in the experiment, you most likely only completed the second task. The extreme limitations of this second task actually helps people focus their mind and access their creativity. Whereas the sheer endless amount of possibilities in the first task can have the effect of creative paralysis. Writers have known about this tyranny of the blank page for a long time. They call it writer's block. Interestingly, Cardinal Hort Tromps' experiment also found that the participants who had limitations not only made more poetry, but the poetry itself was considered better when judged by the university's experts. So as you design your next game, maybe use this free creative tool to help you. Find a limitation to restrict yourself. Can you make a game with no rulebook, that only uses 10 cards, or that can be played entirely using fridge magnets? Can you make a game that would be suitable for players with visual impairments, or a game that will teach players a useful skill? If you are struggling for where to go next, then maybe you need to be more like the meeple. Simple, small with flat sides, but secretly holding all these endless possibilities. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in learning more about this concept, we've copied some useful links to the resources we use when creating this video into the description. And if you found this useful and you'd like to see more, then please consider liking and subscribing, which will be very much appreciated. Creating these videos takes up a vast amount of time, from researching to writing, recording and editing. So, if you feel like you got some value out of it, please consider donating to our Patreon account to help us make more. Thanks. Finally, if you did write a poem, or poems, please write them into the comments section. We'd love to read them. Thanks.